Let us not forget everything that happens is by the will of a holy will. It's time to unite and say that we will be the best amongst men. It's not time to be extreme or to be thinkable, but to stand together. Followers streaming every day. There is platforms. Trust me, you'll find a way. Soon, the followers. Another Son of Followers exclusive. Not one of us. Written by Sheikh Muhammad S. Adley. Broken down and brought to you by host Layla Nasheba. Join us every Thursday night at 9 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Central, right here on Suna Followers. In alhamdulillah, wa salat, wa salam Allah, wa rasulullah. Uh, welcome to our hadith class. And alhamdulillah, uh, the class won't be a long class tonight because this is the class where as we are studying the hadiths, uh, from the book uh, uh, compiled by Sheikh Muhammad Saeed Atli. Uh, this is the book entitled, Not of Us, Not One of Us. And again, this book can be purchased by going to www.adleyonline.com. Please purchase this book. And you can also purchase all the other books that we use at that link too, uh, uh, the other Hadith books and the, uh, the book on the Articles of Faith. You definitely want to pick up the book entitled Articles of Belief because that's the book that we're using in our weekend classes. We're reviewing what it means to believe in a lot. So please uh, go to www.atleonline.com and get a copy of this book, Not of Us, and also the Articles of Belief and also Termites. We're studying from, we're using all three of those books in our classes here at Sona Followers. And uh, the book, Not One of Us, these are hadiths in which uh, Sheikh Muhammad Saeed Atli uh, took that are hadiths that the prophet, wherein the prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, encouraged us to stay away from these behaviors because indulging or engaging in these behaviors, you know, are so bad that it's something that he would never do. It's something that Allah dislikes so much that if you don't check it, if you don't check yourself with it, you can actually end up leaving the folds of Islam if you don't check it. So in other words, they're not saying that you're a kafir or anything like that, but these are actions that are so disgusted, that are so bad, that our prophet tried to emphasize how bad they are by saying, if you ever indulge in any of these actions, you're not one of us. Because it's so opposite of what Islam is. And let's take a look at the hadith for tonight. Let me um, share everything here. Okay, yeah, we're gonna take a look at the hadith. Uh, I do have it open. All right. And again, this is um, a picture of how the book looks in the corner there. Right there at the top above the picture of me, that gray book, that's the book. Go to atleyonline.com and uh, pick up that book and that's how it looks, okay? Let me share uh, to the people in the Zoom room. There, this way they should be able to see, inshallah. And I'm gonna make the screen larger for everyone. It's really a short hadith, but it has a lot of punch to it. <laughs> Let's look at the hadith for tonight. And again, that's the book at the top here, uh, not uh, not one of us by Muhammad S. Atley. Atley Publications. Go to www.adleyonline.com. 
Let's take a look at the Hadith for tonight. This Hadith is narrated by Abu Huraira. Let me tell you guys just a little bit about Abu Huraira because we have some new Muslims here. Abu Huraira is one of the eminent companions and he's narrated most of the Hadiths. Uh, if Abu Huraira was a young boy when he met the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and converted to Islam. And the people used to make fun of Abu Huraira and his mother uh, because he, he was poor. He came from a poor lifestyle. His father had died. So, uh, and, uh, uh, and when Abu Huraira converted to Islam, his mother was so angry and so angry at him that she wouldn't speak to him. So Abu Huraira had went to the prophet and complained about his condition to him. And so the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made supplication. He made a dua for him asking Allah to cause the people, anyone who meets Abu Huraira and anyone who meets his mother to love them. So that way it would stop the people from making fun of them. And he made that supplication and everyone who met Abu Huraira at, or his mother fell in love with him. And then he made a second uh, uh, supplication too, whereas he asked Allah to bless Abu Huraira with a, a, a memory of everything he said and did. So Abu Huraira, whatever he heard the Prophet Muhammad say or saw the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam do, he never forgot it. And he became one of the great scholars of Islam, the first scholars of Islam. So this hadith is narrated by him. He says that the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, it does not seem proper for a person who is known for being honest to be a person that goes around cursing or using profanity, okay? Again, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sent to teach us good manners. And by teaching good manners, in turn, he taught Islam. And so, uh, of course, you know, profanity and cursing, it, cursing has two meanings. To use bad language is one. And also something that the Arabs were known for was sending curses on a person. If someone made you angry, you would curse that person. You would wish something bad upon them. This was something that the Arabs were very well into. So the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had to steer them away from that. He told them, how can you be a person known for your honesty, but every time you get angry, you wish bad upon people. You send down curses upon people. This is bad behavior. So this is another example as to how is this is something that is so bad, so bad that the prophet lets you know that he can't even be associated with you if you do this. You don't want to go around sending curses upon people because a person didn't do what you wanted them to do. So this is a hadith that teaches us that we should take time to think about what we say and be careful of the words we choose. We don't want to use bad language, nor do we want to end up wishing bad upon someone else because that person angered us or that person didn't give in to us. We have to learn to be patient when something happens to us. A lot of us, for example, get angry because your tire uh, got fl uh, went flat. So you will curse the car or you'll get angry at your cat and you will wish the cat something bad happened to the cat. You know, be careful. Don't do that. This is bad behavior. And I want you guys to remember the prophet taught us that whenever you curse something or someone, if that thing or person was not deserving of that curse, it's going to come back on you or it's going to come back on you, something that you love, your family or something that you love. So we have to think twice before we go around sending bad wishes upon other things. As Muslims, we have to believe that everything good that happens to us comes from Allah. 
And also whatever bad happens to us comes from a law too, as a result of what we brought on ourselves. So don't sit around cursing others for your bad fortune. Don't curse others for your good fortune either. Instead, we should busy our tongue with remembrance of Allah, saying words like Supana Allah, Alhamdulillah, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, when we are faced with grave situations. And finally, we learn from this hadith that as a true Muslim, which is a person that submits to Allah, we should strive to make sure that everything we do Everything we say is done with dignity, humility, and balance. This is something that I am always emphasizing as a diet. Dignity, humility, and balance. That's what Islam is all about. Islam is a way of life based on justice. Justice. Allah did not make any of his laws or commandments as a means of oppressing us or punishing us. Everything is for the betterment of us. And our prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us that even when bad things happen to us, we should look to see the good. Look to see the good in everything because there is good in everything. Learn from our mistakes. Learn from our, our trials. Let the trials and hardships of life make you stronger. Let the trials and hardships of life make you a person of more dignity and humility. And let the trials of life balance you, not turn you into a person that is quick to curse things when things don't go its way. So that's the hadith for tonight. I'm going to stop right here. Subhana kalahuma wa bihamdika. A shadow on la ilaha ila anta. A stock firuqa wa tubwe lake. Are there any questions about this hadith? Any questions or comments? Oh. Yes, I have a quick comment. This is so true. And I seen it happen with my own eyes With when uh, somebody I had knew he had cursed somebody. And that same year, his whole life just started crumbling apart. And it's crazy because that person had just told us about this hadith you were talking about. And he ended up cursing these, these individuals. And then we all saw his whole life just start crumbling apart. So that is so true. Yeah, so it happens. True. Yeah, I'm sure the rest of you got stories like that too. I've seen it happen to a lot of people too. You know, and I always try to you know, protect myself from that because I'm telling you what goes around comes around and it ain't nothing pleasant, you know, to have to eat a humble pie, you know, because you couldn't control your tongue. You couldn't control your emotions. You couldn't control uh, the fact that something didn't go your way. 